think I, st uh, I forgot the this. Yes, starting over, I forgot to unmute the, the microphone. So yeah, it's Korea, uh, Adventure Game Framework under Godot. Uh, <laughs> this is funny, and <laughs> let's do that again. <laughs> Does this work? Yeah. Okay, so starting over from, from scratch, this, um, this uh, Adventure fr uh, Game Framework on, under Godot. Uh, so, adventure games and anatomy uh, at first. Uh, we will f I will focus on what adventure, adventure, ga adventure game creators actually need, what do they require uh, to, in order to create their games, and what do they actually don't want uh, when they are focusing on creating the game itself. Then I'll talk more about its career, introduce it a little bit more, talk about its current status, and what we, uh, what we can do to make it Actually, actually better and conclude. So, what's an adventure game? <coughs> Basically, a few elements that you will find in every uh, in every adventure game. Pointingly, the adventure games, of course. Uh, well, there there were a lot of adventure games in the, in the history, so I'll mostly focus on those you uh, you can uh, you can see here. Uh, most of the time you will be playing an, um, an animated character, the main player that can move around uh, over a scene, change, uh, f uh, go from room to room, etc. So basically walks. You can find also items, NPCs to talk with. Uh, those NPCs are of course uh, re reacting to actions, actions uh, that you can find here uh, on certain UIs. Uh, sometimes on certain UIs you won't find them, Depends, depending on the game you will find them uh, under the right click uh, to change the, uh, the actual action to, uh, to perform on the, uh, on the game objects uh, such as talking, give up, use, give, etc. Other elements that you will find in almost every adventure games, uh, mostly 2D uh, of course here, puzzles Using, the, using all the items that you will be able to find in, uh, in the rooms, which means, of course, having an invent inventory to keep all these items into, uh, into your pockets, which is funny because usually your pockets are that big and you could put a, a, a whole ship into it. Uh, dialogues, of course, as I said, you will meet a lot of, uh, a lot of people, uh, NPCs to talk with into, your, uh, into the games. Uh, in order to, to uh, follow the whole history, which is uh, interesting, <coughs> and uh, it's totally part of the story that you want to uh, that you want to tell the player, and also in or also in order to tell uh, a story, you will need cutscenes that reward the player when as he advances the story of the game. Uh, that's what the player is looking for when uh, when he advances the game. So, first of all, th th we are talking video games here, and uh, it is mostly commonly accepted that uh, video games are no kind of an artistic thing. So we are talking with art. Uh, we are working with artists here. What do artists actually need to work on video games like this? First of all, they need they need to be responsible of the lifetime of the uh, the assets they are uh, actu actually creating for the game. From the beginning, from the black canvas to the sprite that will be in the actual game. They need no dependency on the programmers. They just want to draw their art, put it in the, in the game and don't ask any programmers, oh, please can you pro uh, program, update this sprite with the, the new asset I just created and update it again, uh, which needs recompiling uh, all the time. Boring stuff for the, um, for the, the, the artist. They just wanted to be in the game and do not require anything. And of course, that's the, uh, the most important thing. Since they are video game artists, their medium is the video game itself. Uh, of course, they will draw all their assets in the ded dedicated software, such as games, such as creators, such, such as uh, Photoshop, whatever. Uh, but they will th uh, then export them and put them in the video game directly. Otherwise, uh, it stays on, a, on their blank page, and they are PNG artists. Now, 
that was for um, that was for the game artists. Now, wh what do game designers des uh, need? Those are, are not the same. These persons are the one who actually writes the write the story and turn it as scripts that work in the uh, that make the game work. Uh, as the, those scripts are processed and as the scripts are used uh, according to the actions of the of the player make the game advance change the game state uh, and uh, all this kind of stuff so game designers basically create their story by building rooms using the backgrounds from the artists and they put on uh, on this navigable areas for the play to, to know where the player is able to walk or not uh, hotspot, uh, hotspot areas. Uh, this is more some kind of UI stuff, but it can serve the story as well, since you want to uh, to be able to uh, to define these areas to be uh, focusable, so the player can just look at them, but maybe not pick them. Uh, use uh, just use items on on them, but still not pick them, not push them, etc. Items, of course. Trigger areas. Sometimes you, um, in, your, in your stories, you want to be able to have the player walking in an area and trigger an, another event and, for example, start a cutscene. NPCs as well. So basically, this is accessing the uh, access in, and influence the game logic, but not too much because if you give the game designer too, mu too much uh, freedom, then it's, it w first it will be more difficult to, uh, for him because he will have to manage so many things and he wants to focus on the game logic on, uh, only, only his story. But still complex enough, enough to, for him to be able to create and write interesting stories uh, and, um, and focus on this. So now, what do game creators in general don't want to mess, mess with? First of all, um, I believe that they don't want to, uh, to care about the UI. In a, uh, I mean, they, uh, they need to care about the UI because they, they want to know what it will look like. They want to change the theme. They want to, uh, to place it on the, on the screen. They want to define the, uh, its basic behavior. But in an, event, in an adventure game, you have the inventory. You have all the dialogues, the verbs, actions that you can find uh, on the UI. UI. But... They, uh, they should be already done, and the, um, and the game designer should only define uh, their look, not they, uh, their actual behavior, what it does behind the scenes. It's not interesting for him. So only define their appearance, eventually special behaviors, the rest is too technical. So you want to, they want to care about how characters actually move. Movement of the characters is some, uh, is some kind that can, it's a very specific task to be managed in, uh, in the game engine. Now, nowadays, game engines can, ma can deal with this pretty easily with a lot of techniques. You can have pathfinding st uh, stuff, navigation, whatsoever. So um, the easiest manner for, uh, for the game designer to do this is to just define the, the, the areas the walkable areas, and that's all. Also, the same for the animations. They want to define the animations and forget about them. Create them, name them, call them, uh, call them by scripts, of course, but don't manage the way the animations are actually started in the, in the engine. Uh, don't manage the, their timings. This is creating the animation, but don't manage the, the, this between the timing of the animation and the timing of all the management of all the events of the game. And so on. There are a lot of stuff like this. I didn't talk about sound, for example. So, we are talking about a Godot framework here. So, Godot does, doesn't provide, the, um, doesn't Godot provide already all the stuff you require to, uh, to do this, like sprites, animated sprites, animation player to do the animations. Uh, so every, everything's okay. GD script, which, uh, which allows you to create your scripts, scripts your, uh, your game, uh, manage the inputs of the, uh, of the player. Everything, everything's fine. But uh, it's already too low level for the creators, so we need more simplicity. And that's the purpose of Fiscoria. So what is Iscoria? Iscoria is currently, in its current state, 
a set of tools and scripts, mostly scripts, that are built on top of, uh, of Godot. And it, they define a basic workflow. That means the, uh, the scripts are here. And you will, as a game creator, we ju just have to put them on your nodes. Uh, and, the, and that's all. And after that, we, you will have to, uh, to use another way to script your game logic. It's meant to be a tool for teams, artists in one hand, uh, game designers in, uh, in the other hand. And it's built, built on, top of, on top of it in order to forget about the programmation stuff. It's already done for you. So it's a collection of scripts, as I said, to apply on Godot scenes and nodes. Then about the scripting part that allows you to actually make your, uh, make your action, the actions that you will see, the dialogues as well, these kind of, of things that you can have here, those are the actions, look, use. This would be a script that you could put on a red bed. I, uh, I put a commentary, item red bed, for example. So the action look, basically makes this, uh, the, uh, the player to say, oh, uh, a nice red bed, fine. Um, and also another action, if you want to uh, action verb use on this red bed, the player would just say something else. In the same way, you, could, uh, you will have a lot of commands in, the, uh, in this uh, scripting language to allow you to add, um, add the object in your inventory use the, uh, the object on another object and manage this using states. This is not exactly the, the purpose of, uh, of this presentation because that's the, that's the way it works. And this is not meant to be changed. It all, all, already works. The nice thing about Xcorea is that it already cares about all the, um, all the stuff I, I said before. The games elements are um, the games elements and the managers. Everything works. Items, navigations, animations. You uh, you can already forget it because it basically already works. Uh, just to show you a game that's already using Scoria, a professional game that was out in 2016. Uh, the, this game is uh, the interactive adventure of the Mendoza and, Pin and Pizza Boy, uh, which uh, started development in May uh, 2012. It's a classic point-and-click gameplay, basically. So it, be, it just fits the, um, the purpose of the, uh, of the framework. It was made by, by only six person, then 12 in, uh, in total. So it was, uh, Escoria was actually created during the development of this, uh, this game in particular. It was a Kickstarter, uh, and the game was signed with a play publisher. The idea was to release uh, Escoria as free software under MIT license after the game was uh, actually released, which it was. <coughs> so that's, that's good, but that's not enough. We, uh, the, we have to know that Escoria was, was written already a, a long time ago. It was written under Godot Engine 1.x, if I'm not wrong. And now Godot ju uh, is just version 3.2 since like two or three days. And a lot of things happened uh, between the, uh, in this period of time. A lot of features uh, made their, appear their uh, appearance in the uh, in the engine, such as uh, ed editor plugins and uh, just to name one. But th not only this. Problem is that Escoria, uh, Escoria's maintenance is not very easy because the backend the backend scripts that make the whole framework work. Uh, are very big. It's a, lo uh, it's a whole load of, uh, of script, and it's not easy for, uh, for someone like me who arrived after the development of this game. I wasn't the, development, the developer of uh, nor, neither Escoria nor uh, Doc Mendoza game. Uh, I, I arrived just after, uh, when the, the framework was released, and it's really difficult to dive into this base of code. Uh, so the Actually, you can run sound music, run anima animations, modify game states, but it's made of hacks almost everywhere to just tweak something, uh, something that, uh, some problems that you, you can find because of some Godot bugs. You can have this in labels, for example. It's very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to use. So we are, in, in my opinion, I need more f flexibility. Currently, if you want to make a, a an actual scene, this is a scene, 
uh, which you would call a room in, a, in another tool, for example, so basically a background with the wall cable arrays. Uh, you have them, yeah, you have the background here, you have the terrain, uh, and the, the, this terrain node is actually the wall cable area. And all the other elements here are basically sprites, other game elements, the players here. Uh, then you, you put everything in, uh, in this way, but certain elements such as the background, the background and the terrain are mandatory. And the, fa the fact is those names need to be in the right order on the, in the century, so back background need, needs, to be, needs to be in first, terrain just after. They need to have this very name. This is not very fe flexible, so this must change in order to let the, uh, the creator make the thing, uh, the, all the things the way he wants it to be. Uh, in, uh, in order to, uh, because of this, it's hard to add new features. Some new features have, have been had added uh, in, the, in the past few months, uh, such as the shadows under the, the characters. We'll spe we're speaking 2D shadows here. Uh, you can also have lights in your, in your backgrounds, and uh, certain uh, one of our user was uh, wanted an, a feature uh, so that lights actually had an impact on the shadows under the under the player. Usually, shadows are just part of the sprites, and that's all. He wanted to uh, he wanted something to be uh, more more dynamic. Which, is the, which was difficult, so we just had to find some, uh, something. But again, this is very hacky to me. <coughs> so what are, what are my goals uh, in order to evolve Escoria in its current state? For, uh, first of all, simplify the usability. It's already very easy to, uh, to use, but you, have to, you basically have to read the manual. And a uh, great manual uh, has already been written by Floss Manuals, uh, which you can find on the internet for free. Uh, it was, uh, it's a great, uh, a great example of a game, of a point-and-click game that you, uh, you're able to do with it. Keep it uh, as simple as possible and maintain in order to appeal more people to add new features, fix bugs, because there are bugs, not only Godot bugs, but also Escoria bugs. But uh, also, of course, don't make it a new adventure game, uh, a, new, a new adventure game studio or visionary under the In order to make this, uh, um, the idea is to make a score, yeah, an, uh, an editor plugin. Making this will, will enable us to um, integrate uh, Escoria directly into the editor. Uh, and also enable us to create new tools such as an, e an Escoria scripting editor so you will be able to write your Escoria scripts directly into Godot which is not, not possible currently and also all sorts of, uh, of ideas that you can have here for example for ex uh, also another idea I had a custom user scripts to add uh, new functionality without having to, modif to edit the actual Escoria source code this is Escoria, a whole bunch of scripts in one folder named global. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, this, is, uh, this is a pain. <laughs> so I wanted to, uh, to, more, to look more, more like this, more, um, more hom um, homogene with the different folders. Basically, it's sorting all the source code, but it also means reorganize the functions into the, uh, into the scripts, which is uh, a lot of works. Um, this has impacts on the relationships on the relationship between uh, the user synth and Escoria. So basically, uh, we, I need to make them a little bit more smarter uh, and try to guess the guess what what the what the game creator wanted to do uh, when he created his scene. Um, I'm trying to, uh, to go a little bit faster because I take I took a, a little too much time. But to, uh, to be very simple, I, want, uh, I only want the, us the user nodes, the, uh, the scenes that the user created, to have two tasks only. Receive user inputs and emit them to Escoria. Escoria manages them, does his stuff, and gives back the, uh, those nodes um, actual actions to, uh, to perform, such as move the node, uh, play animation on the node, and that's all. I, currently, you can see some game logic um, 
yeah, you, you can see some game logic inside the, uh, the scripts that, uh, that, you, uh, that are currently uh, in those scripts, which is uh, not something, something we want. And uh, to, to finish like, uh, uh, on this, the example scenes. Currently, Scoria comes with a, a few example scenes which are crappy. Actually, this is, uh, this is the, the only one. I started something over, but yeah, uh, we want definitely something di different. So in order to do, to do this, um, well, basically we'll make it from scratch. This means um, make multiple demo scenes showing different features of the of Escoria. Uh, that can be animation in the background, one scene, uh, side scrolling on other scene. Uh, this way, the, um, if one room, one example room, is able to sh uh, showcase only one feature at a time, it's easier for the for the users to dive into Escoria and use it. And of course, make it a little bit more uh, beautiful because uh, yeah, um, if if I just, if I see this for the first time, uh, I'd run away. So yeah, that, that's the ba basic idea. So of course, th this is a lot of work. Uh, that's a lot of work, and it has just started. Uh, I should have started this a uh, few time ago, but yeah, life, uh, open source, this, this kind of stuff. So there is no working branch yet. It will happen soon. Um, if you already have used Escoria, if you're already using Escoria, expect some. Uh, compatibility breakage everywhere because it's, it will basically change completely. But in, in, the, in this time, uh, by starting from scratch, uh, I'm reintegr reintegrating all the existing source code, cleaning it, removing all bugs, all hacks, uh, portion by portion, in order to have it uh, working exactly the exact same way as before. So it's transparent, but uh, but it, uh, it will be totally changed behind the scenes. So, of course, no estimated <laughs> date of delivery. So, uh, so for, for those of you who are already working, were waiting for Godot, that's one more thing to wait for. So, what you can do currently, uh, just to finish on this, you can drop by on IRC. Uh, I'm usually idling on Godot Engine as Korea. There are some, some people who, who are idling there as well. Uh, so you can share your ideas and suggestions. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the Escoria repository. It's on the official uh, Godot engine account, since it was uh, related in, in, a, in a certain fashion uh, with Godot. Uh, and if you have any idea, uh, suggestions, you can also drop them and file an issue in there. That's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks. If you have any questions. So do, uh, do we have plans for HTML5 exports? Uh, actually, th this is not exactly related with Escoria itself. This is more a Godot question, to be honest. Uh, there are plans about this, uh, HTML. If I'm not wrong, we have a um, paid contributor who's currently working on web exports. Uh, I'm not really aware of, uh, of the current status of this. Uh, but this will change this since uh, we have some people working on this. But if you, if you require threads, uh, that, uh, that means you, you are waiting for thread support in the browser. Uh, what we should be on the uh, current stack. So usually what you do is uh, rewrite your code to do not use threads. That's the way to support the image uh, right now. Yeah. Then, so current, about this, the threads management in the in the web browsers, again the same answer. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, 
this is not exactly the purpose of Escoria itself, even though uh, it's, uh, of course, obviously it's using, uh, it's using threads. Uh, but th this will have to be tested. I, ha I don't know the current status of web exports right now with Escoria, nor with Godot Engine itself, because I'm not using it myself yet. So I have difficulties to answer your questions. But uh, if you drop by at the Godot stands, maybe uh, somebody will be more able to answer your question. Yes? Yeah, so about the Android compatibility and all the widgets that you can use on Android applications, that's something I have in mind indeed to make it work with, uh, with Android and mobile uh, devices as well. Uh, that's, that's important because, in, yeah, in my, in my opinion indeed, that's uh, a platform that's, that suits very well these kind of adventure games. Um, so yeah, that's something I, I have in mind, and I will try to, uh, to work on Android exports as well to make it work, uh, and ease also, also ease the game developer work uh, to, uh, to provide him with already uh, sense already made for him, if uh, so that they fit for uh, for mobile platforms. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>